Hello, I'm Artifacts of Mars, and we're, here we have an article by Coral Davenport and Campbell Robertson of the New York Times, and this article amounts to yellow journalism. The issue is an island, Isle de Jean Charles in southern, southeastern Louisiana. The river comes through here. At issue are 60 American Indians, all right? Uh, 60 American Indians live on this land, and they originally came here to avoid resettlement by the Indian Resettlement Act long, long time ago. And they've been fighting to stay there. Well, what has happened is, I guess they lost their fight with the federal government, and now they're being moved off the island. Now the problem is, what's being blamed here is sea level rise. But as we'll see, that isn't true. You see, sea level rise uh, isn't happening. I can I can get into that uh, big time if you want if you want to talk about salinity and uh, buoyancy and a few other factors. We can get into that. Each morning at 3.30 when Joan Berg gets, leaves a mildewed and a rusted house that her parents bought on her grandfather's property, she wears a bridge connecting this bit of land, waterlogged island in Louisiana's terra firma will again be flooded and sh she will miss another day. See, these Indians moved here to avoid the resettlement by the government, and now the government's going to resettle them anyway. Around the globe, governments are confronting the reality that as human-caused climate change warms the planet, rising sea levels, stronger storms, increased flooding, harsher droughts, dwindling fresh water supplies could drive the world's most vulnerable people from their homes. That is a lie. You are a liar. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Uh, actually, around the world, artificial islands are being built. Between 50 and 200 million people, mainly subsistence farmers and fishermen, could be displaced by 2050 because of climate change. Uh, I have news for you uh, liberals. Uh, climate uh, has always driven human populations, but we're being told that these 60 American Indians are the first, and in fact they're actually being moved by the government. You don't want to wait until people have lost their homes until they flee and become refugees. The idea is to plan ahead and provide people some measure of choice. So Walter Kalin, head of the Nan Nansom Initiative, a research organization working with the UN, to address extreme weather displacement. The Isle de Jean Charles Resettlement Plan is one of the first programs of its kind in the world to test of how to respond to climate change in the most dramatic circumstances while tearing communities apart. Under the terms of the federal grant, Island's residents are to be resettled to drier land in a community that, as of now, does not exist. All the funds have to be spent by 2022. Now, there is no doubt about this island. Uh, having been eroded away, but the reason it, but the reasons are complex. I've known what the Army Corps of Engineers does for a long time, and one of the things they do is they'll dredge out the river in the name of flood control, in the process, the river runs faster, and it doesn't leave natural sediment. And there's been logging companies, oil companies, that have caused problems. That's on record. 
that's not arguable. Here's the uh, little map of the area. Ironic, isn't it? You have the uh, little thing on the right saying saving capitalism, and here we have the New York Times, which is an anti capitalist magazine, newspaper, whatever. Still, many uh, residents file the some trials don't want to leave. Attachment the uh, island runs deep. Parents and grandparents live there. There's a cemetery on the island that no one wants to abandon. Old and well earned distrust of the government hangs over all efforts. In a bitter dispute between two Indian tribes, so the members of the island have thwarted efforts to unite behind the plan. They don't want to leave. Ain't nobody I talked to wants to move, says Edison Darter, 66, a lifelong resident, was erected handwritten signs at the entrance to the island, declaring his refusal to leave. I don't know who's in charge of all this. Whether they leave is first of well, the hard questions. Where does everybody go? What claim do they have to what's left behind? Will they be welcomed by the new neighbors? Will they be there? Be work nearby? Will they be allowed to join them? This is not just a simple matter of writing a check and moving happily to a place where they embrace by their new neighbors," says Mark Davis, director of Tulane Institute on Water Resources Law and Policy. If you have hard times moving dozens of people, it continues. It becomes impossible to. And then kind of organize a fair way to move thousands or, re or even hundreds of thousands. Or if you look at the forecast of South Florida, maybe even millions. Now, we're going to switch. To M Michelle Malkin for a minute. Left has concocted a lu lucrative category of politically correct victims, climate refugees. It's the new green racket. This is on townhall.com and the writer is Michelle Malkin. Taxpayers will now be forking over untold billions to ease pain allegedly inflicted by carbon casualties by industrial activity. By contrast, those who have suffered as a direct result of government incompetence by federal environmental bureaucrats continue to get the shaft. Consider the plight of two tribes, the Biloxi, Chick, Chittimaca, Choctaw, and Louisiana, which is what we're talking about, and Navajo Nation, New Mexico, who got screwed over when that uh, river where they uh, let all that stuff from the mine out. Not going to deal with that here. New York Times splashed a vital story on its pages this week, spotlighting the U.S. Department of just HUD. $48 million grant native Americans who live in the flood ravaged coastal community of Isle de Chun Charles. About 60 residents, the majority of whom belong to the Bloxy tribe, will be resettled dry. Right on land. That's eight hundred thousand dollars to each climate refugee. Never mind times propagandists themselves admit the erosion of the island began in nineteen fifty five as a result of land use and land management factors that have nothing to do with climate change. Channels cut by loggers and oil companies eroded much of this island, the paper reported and decades of flood control efforts have kept once free flowing rivers from replenishing wetlands sediments. Yeah. Never mind that there are conflicting scientific analyses to the extent which man made greenhouse gases have caused sea levels to rise while the rate is accelerating, and how much, if any, carbon emissions would actually mitigate 
purportedly rising sea levels. Never mind that environmental alarmists have conveniently changed their tune from blaming global warming for ri causing rising sea levels to blaming global warming for causing sea level drops. They can't make up their minds. Oh, and never mind that many of the inhabitants of Aldi's John Charles, whose forefathers originally moved there to escape forced government relocation under the 1830 Indian Removal Act, did not want to leave and have fought resettlement efforts for decades. Need I go on? Uh, the Times article is what's known as yellow journalism. Now, if you're not familiar with what yellow journalism is, it's where somebody makes a sensational story in order to sell newspapers. Made famous by a man named William Randolph Hearst, who concocted a story about Spain blowing up the U.S. battleship to Maine. It turns out that According to modern scientists, the USS Maine actually suffered an explosion due to a spontaneous combustion coal fire on board that lit off some uh, ordnance. But it sold newspapers for Win William Randolph Hearst. The same that this is selling newspapers for the New York Times. This is big time mental disorder of liberalism. This is big time fraud. This is disgusting. If you're not disgusted by this, then I, don't, I can't reach you. So, what we have is a major newspaper defrauding people, telling blatant lies and half-truths and such. They are yelp this newspaper is yellow journalism. They have nothing to do with real journalism. I'm sorry, that's the way it is. I'm sorry if you do love the New York Times, that's your problem. Because I hate them. Sometimes I have to use them, too, and that galls me. I'm going to find another online newspaper to use, because this is just utter BS. It's a pure, unadulterated lie. I can use them for something like this where they're caught in a light and I can expose them. I'm Artifacts of Mars. Thanks for watching.